All right, I got the password to the server. Jumping in right now. Get you back on this live view. Pause this music. So this is going to be Assault Sorgonos. And uh, I have played very little Assault in my day uh, back in, you know, UT99 and 2K4. Mostly just, you know, messing around with bots and with friends. So if anyone has any comments on these maps, feel free to offer them up. Because some of these maps I'm going to be seeing for the first time. I'm not sure if this is live, actually. Well, let's go ahead and, and cast this just in case it is live. Um, you see we're on Sorgonos. Let's back up here and try to get a better view of the action. We've got X-Ray on, power-ups on. And bear with me, this is going to be me learning right alongside. you got a bunker down here. Looks like they were... They uh, pushed right over them, took that first bunker. They're going to be coming right through these uh, hallways. And you got that pirate base across the room here. You see Nubik Rubik... Pushing forward. ALQ finally going out. Looks like that was an assault kill. Oh, no. He did some damage. He actually pissed on himself. So this right here is going to be your next objective. And you're going to notice there's a few different type of objectives here. There's ones where you just have to touch them. Uh, there's ones where you have to sort of shoot them and damage them. There's ones where you have to hold the point. So you're going to see a few... A few different ways that they can actually accomplish these objectives. Thanks, Q. We actually, uh, yeah, we're talking to Fat Jeff about that. Some of these maps are familiar and, and, and remakes. Uh, some of them are modified versions of the old maps, and then some of them are brand new. So it'll be interesting to see. There you go. So that was a destruction objective. Now, AOQ is going to be sneaking forward to try to get up towards the next objective before he gets cut off. Oh, but Fat Jeff coming in there with a the huge flak primary, though. Like most of these assault maps aren't going to have overhead maps. So we're going to do our best to keep up with the action. Okay, Mikey's saying this is live. Good. We're, we're keeping track of this, trying to get a feel for how this map's going to play out. As uh, Red Team right now finally got a hold here. Look, like we saw some early objectives taken pretty quickly. Armor's popping right there. Escape pods are opening. Okay, so they're going to rally. So kind of like Blitz, you can rally to the Ford spawns as they move forward. Give you a quick look at the scoreboard here. As you see JR with all the points. Not sure if uh, that's from objectives or kills, but we'll keep an eye on this next objective as they have to load into this escape pod. See Rubenstein and Nubik Rubik setting up. JR, though, trying to be sneaky, sneaking around that backside. He's got one on him. He's actually coming all the way around the back of the ship. I don't know if they see him. Fat Jeff's got one more shot. Doesn't take him out. Sneaking right up that ramp was JR. And uh, so that's your attack time right there. We'll see if Red can match it now. Is they're going to flip sides on us. All right, red pushing up now. First objective down. Looks like that one's a pretty quick, pretty quick capture. We're going to go on board with Nubik Group because he's the furthest forward. He's got this one-on-one -on -one situation. Goes straight up to the point. Three-on-three -three assault. Going to be interesting because you can't, you don't have the level of spam that you do in larger game types. You can definitely sneak through and ninja cap, kind of like we saw JR do at the end of the last round, attacking for blue. Uh, so Nubik Rubik, the furthest one forward. He's got his teammates with him now. We're going to back up and see if they can get into this bunker. It looks like there's only one blocking them off. They can push them right out of the way. Get into that bunker. Flat coming out. Ooh, big flat balls coming out from JR. Kind of reminiscent of the early parts of AS Overlord, if people remember that map. Lots of concrete bunkers down there, but Red doing a great job of grouping up and pushing forward. They're in the pirate base. They're going to have to destroy this little button in the middle there. Not the easiest shots to get. Ooh, Rubenstein goes down, so JR... Knocking him back with a full team wipe there from Blue on Red. They're going to be attacking as one big group, though. So Blue's going to have to get in position. They've got one. Yeah, Kelly trying to teleport back forward to get into the game. So they're not in a three-on-two situation. Let's 
see Mr. Rubenstein in the back here. Maybe trying to sneak around. Yeah, we've seen this before in the previous round. If you can flank these three defenders, you can get some quick shots in on the objective. And here it is right here again. Oh, he goes down. A lot of flat primary coming out from JR. A double kill coming in there. Let's see what he's seeing from his perspective. Another flat kill. So these tight quarters in the interior of this map really proving to be a, a boon for people who uh, people like me who like to spam flak around. Rubenstein actually flanked through the bottom. Seeing that being an effective tactic with only three people in the defense able to get forward and uh, get around the defense to take shots. This base door here looks like it's just going to be a button. We're going to keep, keep an eye on that. You see you got this upper pathway here if you want to be sneaky. And that's why ALQ is actually getting up there. Trying to use some high ground to his advantage. He's going to have Mr. Rubenstein coming up behind him. I don't know if he knows. Yeah, neither one knows the other one is there. Rubenstein's going to jump straight out there. Oh, big flat coming out from JR. They're just going to be blasting each other over there. JR actually kamikaze on him, getting the rampage, but taking him out, more importantly, blocking him from touching that, that uh, button. So only one minute to try to finish this one off. And you see Red having to respawn all the way back. So it's going to cost them a little bit of time as they get back up fort here. Blue in position. They actually lose the high ground. Fat Jeff jumps right over the top of them. Able to get that button. He's almost dead. So he's going to go down. Red's going to lose their... Uh, well, they're going to gain their rally point here, even though they go down. So they're going to have 30 seconds to try to take this last point. We saw JR last time sneak right around the backside and touch that ramp. That's all you really need. It's like playing a game of hide and seek. As soon as you touch that ramp, you're safe. You see Fat Jeff going straight for the same tactic. Mr. Rubik sneaks right around and he gets to it. So using the same tactic as Blue used last round, Red able to sneak around, capture that, or touch that red ramp and uh, end that map. So you can see the, you see the attack times there, so that's going to be a win for Red. <laughs> it does show me on the Red team, I'm not sure why, but I am definitely spectating, I promise. There you can see some of the advanced statistics there. Both teams getting the full objective list. Everyone doing a pretty good job controlling those armors. Not a whole lot of power-ups are going to have time to spawn in 3-on-3, three three just because it's so fast. But we'll take a look at the stats whenever we get a chance. Alright, let me see if I can get some background music. Still doesn't want to work. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop over then, get us some background music. That way these in-between rounds aren't quite so quiet. There we go. I'm going to kick it old school with the UT99 soundtrack. Hope everyone's okay with that. AS Bridge. I believe this was the UT2K4 demo assault map, if I'm not mistaken. Seems to be a much more scaled down version, probably being a lot more appropriate for three on three. <laughs> it looks like Kelly did not pre download the maps. I kind of feel her pain. These are pretty big maps. I mean, the more complicated the map is, the bigger the file is. And some of these are pushing uh, 100 to 200 megs plus. So, it may take a second to get everyone in this map. Uh, so, I will take this break to sip on a little bit of tea. Uh, what's up, Mikey? Actually, most people just call me Khan. Um, originally, well, my last name was Khan with five N's. And some people didn't like typing that out all the time. So they sort of shortened it to like an algebraic equation. Where it was C-O and then in parentheses N times five. Uh, so that kind of got then shortened to Khan X5. And a lot of places like Twitch won't let you sign up with a name that has more than two letters in a row. So uh, kind of... Kind of decided to just make that change, make it a little more unique and a little more versatile. Uh, by the way, if anyone if anyone wants to hook me up with a tea sponsorship, if anyone knows anyone who runs a tea company, please let me know. I will drink their tea all the time. Currently sipping a one called Violet Femme. 
It's gonna be dried lavender, a little bit of vanilla, and a couple other spices in there. It looks like this is gonna take a while. They're asking me to go ahead and stream the other match. We'll wait for one more answer here. Uh, we don't want to be sitting in here for too long. We want to give you guys some content. Yeah, we'll wait another couple minutes on this one just so we have some continuity. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll drink some Earl Grey or some black tea from time to time as well, but this is a little more calm way to wake up the morning. Or to, to start the morning, rather. Hope you guys appreciate it. I woke up early for y'all. To be fair, the cat woke me up early. But, that gave me time to work on my merch store a little bit more, which I'm hoping to debut next weekend. So we've got a couple events going on next weekend. Um, you can see them down on my Twitch channel there. So what, what kind of tea are you guys into then? Um, I argue with DSK about tea all the time, but... Yeah, Kazan, I mean, this is sort of uh, the brilliance of doing things this, this time of day on a weekend, is that uh, it's kind of early for some of the American folks, but... You know, you can, you can pop on at 11, 12, 12 uh, you know, midday. And for the European folks, it's not super late. A little bit harder to organize that on a weekday, of course, but we'll do what we can. Yeah, Mikey, I noticed a lot of a lot of you guys are from the Blitz community, and that's cool. I don't know how many of you guys have played Assault. I had never played Assault in this game before, so I had to download all of the maps. There's Kelly. Like I say, I do I do recognize this map from the UT2K4 demo, I believe. Uh, this definitely looks like a little more interesting, like, it's not a vehicle-based one, right? So, it's got a little bit smaller. It's like we're getting ready to ready up. Let me double check that I've got this volume set to a reasonable level. There we go. Oh, don't get me started on hot cocoa. I'll talk about that next mount, next round. Players are ready, here we go, 3, 2, 1, and it's game time, baby. Connex 5 bringing you this Assault 3 on 3 Draft Cup. Map 2 here, we got Fat Chef's team versus JR's. It's gonna be in a familiar map, AS Bridge. Quick first objective, again, it's 3 on 3, so not as easy to hold these objectives as it might be in a larger team scenario. So we're gonna be see a little more flanking and, and, and sneaky caps of these points. Here we've got red team kind of split up a bit. Interesting to see. But Nubik Rubik able to get that cap. And uh, pretty much everyone goes down, though. See a shield belt pick up by Fat Jeff. Let's follow him as he's got that really the only power up we've seen grab so far. Oh, Rocket's coming all out. He eats those for his trouble and goes right back down. You see Kelly trying to snipe. Counter sniping working really effectively, though. <laughs> the chat coming in, you know how she felt about it. So here's that second assault entrance. Nubik Rubik able to get through. He's going to be going right back out for the pressure controller, which is, uh, you see more tight concrete bunker corridors. Ooh, rockets coming in up top. It's going to be more of the tight areas like we saw uh, last map. This is really where I think the, def the, the defense in a three on three can make a big hold. If they can predict some of the attackers routes because it's so critical to know exactly where they're coming from they, they did get in there though had them outnumbered two to one so hard to keep people away when all they have to do is get to an area alq all kinds of outnumbered right now but we're going to see him backing up and trying to throw some rockets out Oh, a big rocket comes in, but 
They're going to be running up that ramp. I think Nubik Rubik is the furthest forward. Oh, he goes down. So JR sneaking in there. Let's try to follow him for a minute. There's so many deaths so fast in this tiny little area. It's hard to keep track of the action. But Red looks like they're set up in a decent configuration for defense here. That timer's just ticking down. Every kill they get is going to earn them more time to try to capture on their end. Here's that final assault entrance. Looks like uh, we've actually got some power-ups hanging out around it. We finally pushed the fight over to this open bridge, so all the sniping is going to come into play. Looks like Fat Jeff, though, pushing forward, able to get to the top of this bridge. And now we're going to see some long-distance sniping, complete opposite of what we saw for the last objective. We'll look at Kelly, trying to see what she can do from long range. So hard to push people back, because every time you die, you're going to be having to run all the way back up to that bridge, as we see right there. back up and get an idea where these objectives are going to be. Magno hosting us now. appreciate that. I uh, <laughs> actually didn't realize that I had those notification sounds on. So if anyone wants to make annoying notification sounds happen, you, know, you now know how to until I get a chance to change it. <laughs> so here we see these the outside view of this battle inside this tight second floor of this bridge. See them setting those explosives, and I think they have to. Yep, we got one more where they push through the other side of the bridge. It's basically a team deathmatch fight here, or maybe a little more like an elimination. You see the detonator right there. Is this going to be your next objective? We got a nice overview here. ALQ's pushing forward. Let's see what he can try to do by sneaking up on them, but he's down to 33 health, so probably not going to last too long. He actually sort of kamikazes himself. Kelly's going to be sniping and JR is going to be pushing up. Ooh, JR goes down. So Mr. Rubenstein pushing up with Flack. He goes down. Fat Jeff now. He goes down. So red team right now, the, the uh, spawn point for the defense is pretty close to this bridge area. So this is going to be a tricky, uh, a tricky time for the blue team to push forward. I think they're taking that lower route to try to flank a little bit, but there's only so many ways to really get across this bridge. This is another spot where you can see the defense hold for a bit. Ooh, Fat Jeff with a piston up the side there. You saw him trying to just get around the defense. But they were waiting for it. So a smart play there by the red team. You actually saw JR there throwing Kelly some more sniper ammo. So intelligent move there. Sharing some ammo. Letting your teammates play to their strengths. While he's going to push forward with some rockets. And just uh, keep spamming those ramps. And right now, blue team is, is trading kills now. But that's not really going to help them. Because remember, they have to get all the way up to this objective. We've seen them try to do some pistons. We've seen them try to flank, but uh, really just kind of running into the red team head to head. Let's see what Nubik Rubik sees from his perspective. He's already down to 65 health underneath. Oh, and he just gets shredded. Fat Jeff does have. Ooh, he has jump boots. A nice jump up there to that. Okay, he's going to try to sneak right around him. He has 150 armor and he has jump boots. He's going to jump straight to that detonator, and that's going to end it. So finally, after 5 minutes and 33 seconds, a great job there using those power-ups by Fat Jeff. But like you said, great defense by Red that time, pushing them back across that bridge. That's really the last stand. And uh, something where I think you can see a lot of defensive holds on this map. So here you see this first objective. Pretty difficult to defend. They're just going to kind of take some shots at it. Take it down. Give you a quick look at the scoreboard while we're waiting on that one to go down. There we go. Red team knocking down that gate. I feel like they're a little behind schedule, though, as uh, Blue was able to get up forward and do some damage. JR with a piston up top just trying to flank. Getting in there to grab that health and uh, throwing some flat balls out, but... Blue right now is all over ALQ, who actually survives long enough to let his teammates get up and join the fight. The blue team is pretty low on health now, though, so if Red can get up there and throw some finishing weapons out there, some Link or Minigun, they're going to be able to sneak right past them. Uh, but a long run right now from spawn for Red to get back up to the objective. This is one of those points of the map 
where every time you die, it's going to cost you a lot of time. Ooh, AOK with a big flat bar. Rocket's coming in. Oh, if we can get one more kill. The objective was there. All they have to do is get in there. And every time they die, they're going to go down all the way back to that spawn point. We're going to follow Kelly right now. And you see her, well, <laughs> right as I say that, JR sneaks through. He's going to be taking that, well, taking those rockets to the back, but... There we go. Objectives coming out. Making their way. Well, back off this ramp as they just get pushed all the way back by blue. More huge flat coming in from JR. He is just killing it with flat this game. Oh, the mid-air splatter coming out. Ooh, JR got jump boots, able to flank with it. Fat Jeff, not fooled. So you see, we're getting into this tight, uh, you know, bunker area that we saw the defense last round make a pretty good hold on because there's just not a lot of area to maneuver. Much harder to flank in a three on three scenario. ALQ does have armor, so let's go on board with him and kind of see what he's seeing. Oh, nice headshot coming out there, lining it up. Good patience on that aim. Got rockets coming around behind them up top. Fat Jeff gonna take him out, but I think Kelly snuck through. Maybe that was JR. JR's gonna be through. Oh, big rockets. Almost had that edge. Not able to get through, so great defensive hold so far at this point. Already down to only two and a half minutes. You see Mr. Rubenstein up here just sniping right down that direction. You can see he's actually gotten <laughs> ran out of targets because his teammates are doing such a great job of clearing out that entrance. So a tough attack round so far for Blue. Oh, Kelly getting caught with that sniper rifle close quarters. That's not going to help her. They got JR down too. So they're going to have a good opportunity here to move forward. You see JR stuck down in the water. Looks like Red's finally going to have an opportunity to try to push past this water section. They're getting the kills they need, but uh, they're not actually pushing all that far forward. Oh, you saw the Mr. Rubenstein with the lock-on rockets just raining them down. So JR getting stuck in there. I think I may have got my colors reversed there a second ago, but in any case... In any case, blue with the great defense. Red having trouble getting past this this water section. Uh, just getting caught. Oh man, Mr. Just Nubik Rubik blasting people, and then Mr. Rubenstein sniping them with that shock primary. I think that was a multi kill for somebody. Absolutely, just wiping them. So this section, like I say, it's kind of like kind of like a game of elimination three on three pretty much uh, if the attacking team can win around and just have someone left alive they can sneak into the objective and they are just getting held off solidly so far by this blue defense and uh right now they're running low on time red's gonna have to take the rest of the map so jr is getting a little risky here gonna maybe try to do some trick jumps to flank but but we've seen the defense not fooled by that already looks like they know some of the tricks to this map So 10 seconds left to go. Looks like Blue's going to hold on this one. And 3, 2, 1. That'll do it. So that one's going to go to Blue Team. And I'm not... I'm not positive what our map situation is. Uh, I read somewhere that they might be playing four maps for us. Like every match, um, and then just doing a point system. But maybe someone in chat can confirm that. I 
I wasn't sure if it would be best of three or if they were going to go ahead and just play all the maps uh, just to, you know, like I say, accumulate points. But I guess we'll find out what they say here. We'll stick with them. They're not leaving the server yet. So if they keep playing, uh, I'll keep streaming. Hey, hey, look, I have in-game music now. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just mute that because <laughs> it's just clashing with the, with the music I've got in the background. That was the remix. Sorry if you hear me sipping my tea. It's really good, though. And more importantly, it's got a little bit of caffeine content, which I'm probably going to need to keep going through all this. <laughs> okay, we've got Fallen City here. So this is a, a UT2K4 assault map that people may recognize. This one, though, uh, like we were talking earlier in the intro with Fat Jeff, looks like they cleaned up the map a little bit. Few, few, uh, fewer meshes in the way. So the movement's cleaned up a little bit. Looks like players are ready. Three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Con X5 on Assault. Excuse me. <laughs> Fallen City. Assault three on three. Draft Cup. Just saw a great hold by Fat Jeff's team. Now JR's team's gonna try to come back, gain some points by taking them out on this map. We see the first objective going down quickly. They're gonna be running right through this pipe to try to take out that barricade. All they have to do is shoot at it. It's already down to third health. It's kind of an interesting situation you find yourself in as an attacker on a map like this. You have to decide between shooting at the defenders and trying to kill them, or shooting at the objective. So, blue gets the objective, but red completely wipes them out. They're going to have that forward spawn a little bit, however, so... Red's going to have to back up a little bit and just try to take some pot shots. We're going to see JR doing just that with the sniper rifle. Nubik Rubik, though, counter-sniping him to get up close and personal to the flak and rockets, and uh, Nubik Rubik able to win that one. We'll watch him on the attack. He actually goes down immediately, so... Switch over to here. Get the x-ray cam coming out for you. See both teams still kind of feeling each other out. I think they're going to have to capture this objective, so you're going to have to hold that point for a certain amount of time. You see Nubik Rubik jumping in and out, in and out, trying to just accumulate that time and not be too predictable, but Red able to converge on him, so Fat Jeff picking one off. Rubenstein's got a wide open path to it. Oh, a nice snipe coming in from behind. Takes him out by ALQ. Finally able to take that out. And uh, so Red Team's going to be pushing forward fairly quickly here. They've got blue behind them. They may decide to just push forward to the next objective. We actually see JR sniping back at him. And they're going to have to take this path. You see, you'll notice this... Uh, the sort of highway route up here. This was in the original map, but it was a little bit tighter, I believe. I remember it being very easy to fall off in the 2K4 version. So the attackers now are going to be pushing forward. They have to do damage to this gate lock on the wall. They've done a great job of clearing out the area. Only one person left to kill. That'll do it, and I think they'll be able to... Uh... Excuse me. Blue, actually. Going to have to get back in there. They're going to have to do damage to this particular gate lock. It used to be... One on either side. I'm not sure if this map does one and then the other. But once that happens, we'll see these gates open and they'll be able to get inside the building. But Red, wiping out Blue Team one more time. More rockets coming in, so... Blue getting a little bit out of sync here. Oh, they actually take out the lock. Okay, so it is one lock and then the other. So once they take out this other one, we'll see those doors open. But Blue, this is another section of the map where they have a, a long run from their spawn. So it gives Red time to regroup, pick up some armor and weapons and ammo every time they wipe them out. And there's another player down. So Red just converging on them one at a time. Blue kind of jumping in slowly, but able to get that objective. 
And they're going to push through this tight corridor for turning a corner. And then you'll have a train waiting on you. Ooh, you see a nice piston up here from Nubik Rubik. Taking the secret route, dropping right back down into there. He's going to be on top of that train, needing to get to the objective here. Combo's coming out, flat coming out. JR with a clutch flat shot, killing him off that point. He does get that charge placed. They've got one more charge to place, I believe. Yep, here it is inside the train, just like in the original version. So ALQ just going to sit there with rockets. You see JR sitting back. So you see the strategy here, pushing one person up front. One in the back sniping, and then one on the actual point, just in case someone flanks from above, which is exactly what happens to Nubik Rubik drops in, just as Rubenstein does. Oh, Kamikaze on the point is going to knock him off. Rubenstein's got a one-on-one, -on -one, though. He takes out Kelly. He's going to have an opportunity to set these charges if he can survive, and he does just barely. Rockets are heading for his face. So 408, a very respectable attack time for Blue. Did get held up a couple of times, so we'll see if Red can answer and uh, try to take this map. Early on again, coming around this corner, you see ALQ pistoning up and over the edge. He just has to shoot at that barricade. Not sure. Uh, looks like maybe some trickeration going on by ALQ. I'm not sure what exactly his his game plan is here. You see him pissing around the outside of the map. Is he maybe trying to sneak around and get to a further objective early? That's one thing you can do in Assault. If you can get to the next objective early and your team takes the first objective, you are right in position to take the second one. So we're going to follow him. It looks like he's going all the way to these gate locks, waiting for his team to take that other objective, and he's going to just be in position waiting to destroy it. Or can you destroy them early? Perhaps someone in chat knows. Oh, you can actually skip an objective. Okay, well... This wasn't something that was possible in the 2K4 version because these objectives would not be active until. So ALQ with the complete flank going all the way around the map, pushing them back. And now blue team has to suicide and get back to respawn in position to defend this point. I don't think they know what's happening exactly. And ALQ is going to be able to take this next to last objective. He's got one more objective to take. He's going to run in. You heard blue respawn. It's going to be too late. And he's going to capture this one in a minute and 39 seconds. And blue team with no chance to defend that one. So, so, so they might actually be playing one more. <laughs> Looks like some map knowledge coming into play there. So, not sure... We'll see what they decide to do. I know they said Kelly doesn't have all the maps downloaded and they didn't want to have to wait. Oh, was it Mikey? I remember... Okay, I didn't think you could uh, uh, skip some a lot of the objectives in 2K4 because it seemed like they weren't active. Uh, I remember trying to mess around with it a little bit and it was like really, it was really actually oddly tricky to break Assault in 2K4, at least uh, in single player. Um, doing it in multiplayer where you could piston your piston boost your teammates, I guess, was probably a lot easier. It's funny because there's actually ways to trick the bots in 2K4 into piston boost boosting you or shield boosting you, but it's it's really inconsistent. <laughs> yeah, you were definitely able to to skip some. Um, it was just, I remember it being tricky because they'd have volumes where like one object, one set of objectives wouldn't spawn until the next one did. 
Okay, so they're going to change maps here real quick and then get everyone back in, I guess? I don't think they're actually playing you, Party. I think this is just a, a stand-in while they switch while they switch maps for us. Is that right, Mikey? Videos on Twitch or on YouTube? Because I don't I don't normally highlight a lot of stuff on Twitch. Or normally when I highlight something on Twitch, it's, it's to upload and export to YouTube because I think it's a little bit easier to to organize clips there. But if so, that would be kind of interesting, huh? I, yeah, I guess that shows how often I, I curate my my Twitch vods. Maybe I need to look into that. You can create folders now, at least on Twitch. Um, I've tried to start doing that and see kind of whether it's worth doing. If it makes it easier to, to organize for people, then maybe I'll, maybe I'll put a little more time into it. I need to reorganize my YouTube videos too, frankly. I've got all these playlists that are kind of discombobulated. Yeah, like there's there's one um, on Twitch that just has like, uh, I think Casting UT is the name of it. And I just added that one recently and started adding videos to that just to see if, you know, it actually makes things easier to, to organize. Twitch has been a little bit slow to actually sort of care about that, though. Uh, I think until they got bought and they actually viewed themselves as a competitor to YouTube, um, they didn't really care because Twitch just sort of presumed that everyone was going to use YouTube for archives. But but now that uh, you know, now that YouTube is an actual competitor to Amazon slash Twitch, they might actually uh, flesh that part out a little bit. So, I'm not sure. It looks like we're playing Ballistic. Um, not sure if Kelly's going to have to download this map. It would be nice if I could chat to the players from spectate mode. But, uh, <laughs> you know how that goes. There was some discussion in chat about things like skipping objectives and maps. From what I recall in Assault, that's kind of what it becomes in multiplayer, is almost uh, competitive map breaking. And basically you either come up with a creative way to break the map before someone else sees it, or you figure out how to... Uh... Okay, so they're going to have to download that, so we're going to go ahead and keep an eye out for this other game popping up. So I think we're just going to be in the main hub here. Let's jump in. This is Ferox team versus Rage's team. And uh, they're in progress. I'm not sure which map this is, but... Uh... Sorry, I'm going to go to the splash screen while I enter the password just to make sure. Although, frankly, since you can't chat, one, one of the advantages to not allowing spectators to chat to players, it's actually pretty hard to disrupt a match. So if someone does spectate a game that they're, you know, not supposed to be, uh, it really doesn't affect much, except in theory, perhaps the uh, server performance. All right, so we're back in here on AS Nymphus with this other game going on. So looks like this is the first attack round for Red, so they're seven minutes into it. We're getting pretty far up there. That switch getting pressed by Raja. He's going to be moving around. This is a, a new map for me, so we're going to be learning on the fly here. Never mind with the snipe and counter sniping. Big wide open area here. This actually kind of looks like a serious Sam level. One more quick look at the scoreboard to see where we're at. Never mind's going to be sneaking up behind. Never. That's not going to be confusing. Got a door lock here. Looks like it's taking damage. So this may just be a destruction objective. Nevermind's going to be kind of alone on defense here. Um, not sure. Not sure if this game is live, actually. Actually, if anyone wants to hit me up with info. Uh, looks like the other, looks like red team is leaving. So I wonder if this was just a warm-up round. But 
What's up, Alfred? Yeah, this is going to be a three-on-three -three assault tournament. It's just going to be a quick draft cup. I think there's only three teams, and they're basically playing round robin. Uh, I, I, I guess blue wins. This might have been a, just a warm-up round, so... Okay, cool. Rain. Clarifying that, I was going to say that was the least competitive game we've seen so far, if, if that was an actual match. Uh, well, unfortunately, JR versus Fat Jeff's game is held up because Kelly had to download a map, so... Um, it's kind of what we're waiting on right now. I guess the other match finished, and they were just kind of messing around in warm-up mode there, so... JR versus Fat Jeff, we're going to have to wait on that one before the other matches can take place, so either way... We're going to be hanging out, waiting on this match. So let's go ahead and get back in if that's all we got going on. Tippity tap 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 tap. Enhance. Enhance. All right, we're back in the in the prior game. That'll be fine. It'll give us something to do. That would be a good time if anyone's got any uh, any friends that might be interested in watching some assault or some UT or just hanging out and chat. I mean. If people want a, want a t-shirt with the TEA pun, I can make a t-shirt with TEA on it. I mean, if, if that's something that, uh... <laughs> that's something people will buy, I'll make it happen. There we go, Kelly's joining just in the nick of time, so... We'll have us a match here soon. Ballistic is a map I'm not familiar with. Anyone in chat know uh, if this is a port and which game it's from? I'm also not sure what F3 is supposed to do. Here we go, players are ready. Three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Connex 5 bringing you this three on three assault draft cup tournament. We're gonna be on AS Ballistic right here. Quick first objective coming out. We've got this tank rolling towards that main gate. And Blue getting wiped early, so Red doing a great job of taking him out. Let's watch JR for a bit. Just trying to snipe people as they come around that bend. Big flat balls coming out. Ooh. And it looks like a uh, Kamikaze coming out there by Jeff, so let's watch... Uh... Yep, they did get that objective up front. You got that main gate teleport coming around. They're going to be pushing through to the generator area, which I believe is in there. So will give you an overhead view. This is gonna be a section where the attacking team has a long run around the corner. That's gonna be the ones that are key to defending. Because every time you knock them out, it's, uh, it's gonna gain you a good 10 to, 10 to 15 seconds just to let them run back up to the front line. Ubik Ruby pushing in. We've seen him be the spearhead for a lot of these objective captures for his team. Able to get the kill, get in there, capture that point. And uh, he might get wiped out here as Red's got him in a two-on-one situation. He's going to go down, but more importantly, getting that objective. Oh, you see Mr. Rubenstein getting fancy over here. Pissing it up around the sniper. Oh, you see the map actually tells you when someone sneaks through. He's going to be underneath, though. Red doesn't have anyone in front of him. He may get a free run to this objective here. We're going to try to keep up with him. He's actually running about as fast as my camera can keep up. So, quick run. Oh, they had people split up to both objectives. So, great. Great strategy there and teamwork by Blue. Having people go in each direction so hard in a three-on-three -three to cover every objective. There's going to be a run to this Warhead launcher. That's going to be a button right there they're going to have to get to. So red team's job is to body block them, kamikaze them, do any kind of dirty tricks they can do.
just to keep them out of that room. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I actually do have a design. Uh oh, Mr. Rubenstein pushing through. Fat Jeff coming in with the rocket launcher. If he can get one kill, he might be able to get to this button. Oh, a last second save there by Red. ALQ is actually going to kill himself to go back and get more ammo, but move it, Rubik, now. Whoa, one more chance. Blue with a little more relentless attack here because of their spawn points being further forward. They're going to be able to push in and try to get to that button. He actually does. It jumps right over the top, right through that sphere. So keeping it under two minutes on the attack. And that is the number. If Red can beat that, they'll be able to pull these maps even. Go, that tank coming out with the uh, giant shock rifle in the front. Hmm, you see some sneaky piston boosting coming in here as JR tries to fly over the first objective. Doesn't work out, but they do get that first objective the old fashioned way. Looks like they're going to set up for another one. JR is just going to wall run all the way across, get up top. He's going to be jumping down right behind them. They don't know he's there, so he's going to sneak in here, get that first generator. He's just going to have to destroy it. That's going to go down. Blue had no idea he was there. So just like we saw last round, red team this time is, swa or is uh, alternating objectives, splitting up the goals to get it that much quicker. ALQ with that piston straight up into the sniper. Again, they are going to know he's there. It gives them a little notice that we saw. So blue team's going to be ready for him. He's going to turn that corner. Here comes the rockets. Going to open that shortcut door, but have a 2-1-1 situation. And this is where we saw blue team on the attack split the two objectives. And one ran straight for this while the other one opened the other door. Oh, JR, all he got to do is get those three rockets in, clears them out instantly. Blue team a little bit out of position there. They're going to be behind the game. So now we're going to be back to that Warhead launcher, which we saw could be a big uh, defensive point because you have to push that button and then get up there and clear it out. So we saw a good stand there last round by the red team. Blue now is going to try to match him. They've got to hold off for a minute. We got to keep someone away. All they have to do is touch this button. So very difficult. But they do have rockets. They do have... Oh, oh flat cannon coming in. That's what we saw last round. Is player just jumping right over the top. Jumping over the defense and able to touch that button. But this is almost an American Gladiator type situation. Just a scrum over this area. Only two entrances... We're going to see both teams. There's really no way to sneak around here. No trick jumps to do. You're just going to have to get one or two clutch kills. See, red team a little out of sync, though. So blue's going to have the numbers advantage. It's going to be three on two, three on one every time they jump in here. That could be what they need. Oh, JR getting a quick kill. He's going to run right through between the two. Jump to the button. Splits the defense. All it took was the one kill, and the other defenders didn't quite rotate fast enough with just a few seconds to spare. Able to get that cap and win this map. Look at that. Just about 10 seconds between the two. One more set of kills would have gotten them. So very even match there from both of these teams. Splitting maps and down to 10 seconds on the last one. And I think that's all we're going to get from these guys. But we've got the other two teams ready to go. So uh, we're going to stick around. We'll be back for the next map just a few moments.